Welcome back, you fuckers. Alrighty, today we're going to run through how to set up your first mission in the DCS Liberation campaign. So we've gone ahead, we've bought our units, we've got aircraft and ground units that we can actually use. So now we're going to go in and set it up so we can fly a mission. So we're going to come into the mission planning. Okay, mission planning, click on that. It's going to bring up this. We've got our air bases that we currently control. So Batumi, the carrier and the Tarawa. And you can see it's already generated some uh, some flights. Okay, so let's run through this one. So we've got a cap flight two times F-15Cs. We'll depart from Batumi at T plus four minutes. So four minutes after the mission has started, these aircraft will start up and they will taxi out and perform their cap duties. Payload, um, you can go custom if you want. All right, custom payloads, or you can just set it to just normal. Okay, if you just leave it on normal, they'll just have like eight AMRAMs or something like that. I don't really get too fussed about that because I'm normally doing, if I want to do cap, I'll do cap myself and I'll make ground attack do their thing. Um, but yeah, if you want to get right in, you can muck around on the loadouts. Uh, waypoints. So this is important. The waypoints are important if you're going to use an AI aircraft. So if I want this cap flight of two F-15s to do cap, make sure you go to the AI compatible generator. So this is already mean, being generated. So we're gonna just go through this now and then we'll go through how to set one up manually. So you, it's got a takeoff and ascend, a racetrack start, a racetrack end, descend pattern and an RTB. Okay, so the AI need all of these waypoints because they don't have a brain. And if you don't put the waypoints in like that, it will break them, they'll just take off and they'll land straight away. Okay, they'll do a loop and they'll come back and land. You won't have any cap aircraft. So you've got options here, generate cast, generate cap, generate C, generate strike. And then advanced, do not use for AI flights, okay? So if you want to make waypoints for you or for your buddies, okay, you just want to actually put in a waypoint, um, one single target, you can do that manually, but don't do that for AI, okay? Otherwise, they won't work properly. So we're going to, uh, we're going to go to the carrier and we're going to set up, delete that, we're going to add a flight. So we've got F-18 Hornet, F-14, it's got your drop downs. We're going to set up a Hornet and it's going to be for me. All right, we're going to go cap because first things first, we want to try and take out the base defense or sorry, the other uh, airfield, air threats so that we uh, can get some ground attack aircraft going in. So <clears throat> another good thing to have a look at, all these options here, all these, uh, these little things, tells you what is in the area. So at this uh, strike point location ox there is an sa11 search radar sa11 launcher times two and a uh, command post so we've got an sa11 there uh, we've also got a ship a two millennia ships and at covaletti itself base defenses they've got an sa11 okay there and they've got a s26 tunguska all right and two bmps so take note of the group names, group shark, group hare, group raven, all right, group ox, group rhino, group woodpecker, group lynx, okay? All of those names are going to be used in here. So if we go to, let's just switch, we're going to, we're going to do something different, go for cat, uh, seed, we'll take out that SAM site, all right, the SA11, it's probably more pressing. So you're going to go seed. Again, if you're going to do a, if you're setting this up for yourself, it doesn't really matter what task you put this. Okay, If you're going to fly the aircraft yourself, it doesn't really matter. But if you are going to assign an AI aircraft flight to do it, make sure you put the task as what you want them to do. Otherwise, again, it'll fucking break stuff. All right, so we've got our Hornet in. We can set up again if you wanted for some reason to not be able to spawn in until four minutes okay you'd be a delayed start until four minutes in sir but because we're going to be flying this one we don't want to wait four minutes we want to actually be able to start up and get our stuff ready we're going to leave that at zero aircraft count is one client slot so if you want a client to be able to fly this so a player you're going to change that to one okay if you want it to be ai leave it as zero zero is for ai one two three four whatever you've got is going to be how many actual client slots if you're going to play this as a multiplayer uh your start type if you want to start on the runway you want to start hot start dirty hot starters uh or cold start or you want to start in flight okay we're going to go cold because 
that's what we do. And here we go. So waypoints payload, we're not going to worry about because uh, we can change our payload anyway. But again, if you wanted to, you could change your payload if required. Okay, you've got all these different options here. Blah, blah, blah. We're not going to worry about it because we're doing it. Waypoints. So we've got our takeoff waypoint, which gets generated automatically. So now we're going to come down. We're going to go to add waypoint here. Press that. And we've got some options. So it's got predefined waypoints for us to go for. And remember that SAM site we wanted was aux. So we're going to scroll down till we find aux. Come on, aux. There we go. So we're going to go search radar. All right. So now, next little thing, include all objects from the same location. So if you want to put a waypoint for every single uh, target on the ground, make sure that's boxed. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we're going to go add. So you can see it's added each of those, uh, each of the units of that location. If you don't want that, if you don't want as many, if you don't want to have a thousand waypoints on your, uh, in your Hornet, you can just go add waypoint. Again, scroll down to aux or whatever waypoint you want to attack or set as a marker, whatever you want to do. Aux, we're going to go for the search radar. You're going to uncheck, uncheck that and then go add and it will only put the waypoint in because they're all in the same area. So you don't need to have all four of them. You're going to have palms. You're going to just need to know the general direction to fly towards. So that's it. All right. That's how you add in a unique waypoint for a player. Remember, if we wanted to do a seed flight of Hornets, um, let's go seed, bump that up, we'll make it, and we've only got one, okay. Nice, because we only got two Hornets, that's probably why. Um, you're going to come in, you can set your time for them to launch. So if you set it at zero, they'll start up as soon as the other mission fires up. Set it to four. So by the time you've kind of got your uh, aircraft up and running, they will essentially start up on the uh, the aircraft carrier a bit more in immersion waypoints so this is where it would be different so for an ai so for us we just need the one waypoint because we've got a brain we're like okay yep waypoint two i know is where i gotta fly so i'm gonna go to waypoint two you do that for the ai aircraft and you just put in waypoint two they'll just fly to the waypoint and then go back and land okay it doesn't work properly so you're gonna go to here ai compatible generate seed slash d we're going to choose our target, aux, SA11 buck CC, SA11 buck SR, and we're going to, it's pretty cool, gives you the distance as well, distance to site, 123 nautical miles, site threat range, 18, site radar detection range, 53. So that is that, we're going to go OK, and it's going to put in all the stuff that the AI flight need. All right, so that AI Hornet now will take off in four minutes after the mission started and it will do its thing. It's going to fly up to 5,380 feet, pretty precise there. It's going to ingress to waypoint three at 21,000. It will do its attack runs on the two targets and then it will get out and it will go and land. That is how it works. And you can do the same thing with the Dara. Okay, the tower will have a waypoint. What's it going for? Bongo. Okay, and you can just delete that stuff. If you don't want to use the, the Harriers at the time, just delete the unit. So we go back to Batumi. So we've got two cap in four minutes, two cap in 19 minutes, two cap in 52 minutes, and two cap in 67. You can change all that stuff as required. Uh, so we're going to go four. We'll change that to maybe 12 minutes. Change that to maybe 25 and then change this one to maybe 35. Just so you got a like a bit of an overlap of, you know, because once they get uh, Winchester or they run out of fuel, they're going to RTB and go land and then you'll have no cap. So that is that. Sweet as. All right. Before you do that, make sure you save it. So save. YouTube, we're going to just go over the top of it because it is actually turn or sorty one up, sorty number one still. So we're going to save that and we're good to go. So now, once you're happy with all of your flights and stuff, you're going to go into mission planning again. All right, hit takeoff and it's going to bring up a box now. 
So this is it, waiting for mission completion. So you just leave this running in the background. You are clear for takeoff. For single player in DCS, open the mission editor and load the file liberation underscore next turn. Then once the mission is loaded in ME, in the menu flight, click on fly mission to launch. Okay, so if you're gonna do it single player, you do that. For multiplayer in DCS, open the mission editor, load the file liberation underscore next turn, click on file slash save. Exit mission editor, go to multiplayer. Host the server with the mission and tell your friends to join. So the step in the mission editor is important. You have to, if you're gonna play this as multiplayer, so if you wanna play this with your buddies, you have to open it up in the mission editor still and you've gotta just save it. Okay, you don't have to do anything to it, you just have to save it. If you don't save it, when you go to launch the, um, the mission in your server, your server will just keep crashing. Okay, so save the mission and it will load up and your buddies can come in and join. Once you've played the mission, click on the accept results button and then if DCS liberation does not detect mission end, use the manually submit button and choose the state.json file. Okay, and that's all gonna be in your actual um, liberation folder that you installed. So that's it. So now let's go to DCS, quickly uh, go to the mission editor, open mission. You can see there it is, liberation underscore next turn. We're going to open that up and do its thing. It's going to load. And you can see because we've got the cull on, even though all these bases are red, it's only spawned in units that are within 100 kilometers of one. Okay, the front line. There's the front line there. There's our ground units. And there is the SAMs. You see our waypoints generated there. And we've got Covalady itself. Okay, all the, uh, so you can have a quick squizzy beak if you want. And then, because it for some reason it spawns the uh, aircraft carrier group way the fuck out, if you don't want to fly, what is that roughly? 124 nautical miles. I mean, if you do go, go for it. But if you don't want to, if you're like, I want to take her from the carrier, but I don't want to have to fly for eight hours to get there. Just drag the carrier closer to where you want it to be. Move the waypoints. Same deal with the Tarawa. All right, you can move ships over. Do that. Uh, you've also got two tankers. So you've got a KC-130 and a KC-135 uh, with their flight plans. Okay, so if you don't like, because uh, sometimes it'll put the, the tankers will be doing their racetrack orbit over the top of the front line and when you're trying to tank or if you try and tank you're going to get shot down by fighters because you're flying right over so if you don't like where the tanker positions are just drag the waypoints around move them as you want uh, you've got a jtac here all right which is spawned in automatically don't have to do anything with that and then uh, there is an awax as well the tankers are set to uh, invisible and immortal. So if you're like, oh, I don't want my tankers, all that means in the mission editor is that uh, the red side, red aircraft, don't know that these guys are here. Okay, they don't appear to the uh, enemy aircraft. So they're invisible and they're immortal. So they can't get shot down by you or anyone else and they're turned to invisible so that the red side won't be able to see them. Okay, according to them, these aircraft don't exist so if you're like well i'll just fly behind my tankers and use them as uh missile shields hey i don't care okay they're going to fly straight past that and go for you because they can see you they can't see these and that's the same with your uh your reaper drone okay it's set to invisible and mortal so they can't see the reaper and your awacs where the hell it is down here all right you can move your awacs know why it would be over there but um bit better call out. AWACS is the same. Or maybe it's not. Yep, yeah, it is. Invisible and immortal. Okay, so all your AI support aircraft can't get shot down by the red. So you can put them wherever you want. Okay. And that's it. So then you if you're going to play single player, you just hit fire mission right there. And then if you're going to play multiplayer, come in, hit file save, save the mission. Bang on out of that. Go to multiplayer, go to new server, throw your mission in, and boom, off you go. All right, start the mission. Once you've finished the mission, it will pop up with a uh, mission completion. We'll go back to the other screen. Where are we? Where are we? 
this one. That will say mission complete, except results will pop up and then it will generate a new file for you. Alrighty guys, I hope that helped. If it did, make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, you guys know the dealio now. If you've been watching the videos for a while, thank you legends for doing all of that stuff. Helps me out a heap, cracking along with the subscribers. And good to see that you guys are liking what I'm doing. Anyways, lastly but not least, I do stream on Twitch. That's where I'm mainly doing my, all my stuff. So come on by Australian Western Standard Time, 1300 in the afternoon. I normally go for a couple of hours, Monday to Friday. If you haven't already, come on by, say good day, and ask any questions you've got live on stream. Right, guys. Catch you fuckers on the next one.